There we go. I'm here. <laughs> hey, Bob. Good. Hi, Julia. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Hi, Jennifer. Look at that beautiful little background you got there. Hey, Jen. Hey, Julia. Hey, good morning, Kimberly. How y'all doing? Just Roger. peachy keen, Roger. Good morning, everyone. How are you? And good. President Eco. Yeah. We're in the mask because the wife, we just got back from Europe and she uh, has COVID. Oh, goodness. So, oh, man. I know. Where'd you go? So I'm trying to keep from getting it. We did the Mediterranean. This is about two or, two or three years ago we were supposed to do that. So we did the Mediterranean. Um, it was fun getting back, especially Heathrow. Yeah, it was oh, lots God. of fun. Heathrow and Charles. We missed our flight. Yeah, that, that one too. Well, I, oh, I always had a flight going on standby. So uh, from first class to last class. But anyway, we made it. <laughs> to, to no well, it's class. better than no class. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No class if you had to fly through Heathrow. Exactly. <laughs> Security was so much fun. I, I figured I set off the alarms because of all the gold gold crowns I have. I have no clue. <laughs> I haven't been so thoroughly searched since I was an infant. Wow. But did you enjoy it? I had that kind of experience in Switzerland one time. I And I turned around and looked at her and said, wow, do you want a cigarette too? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we need to get back on track. <laughs> uh, sorry, have, you met, have you met us, Buck? Have you met us? That's I, think right. not, I think I'm going to like your group. <laughs> that tracks perfectly with our group. So, yes, now this is us. We are here in our... The, the irreverent group. <laughs> and, and the Shane E Club can't have no fellowship. I don't know. I argue. <laughs> I would rather be irreverent than irrelevant. So, that's my exactly. fault. <laughs> Always has been. I'm filling in for President Sam today because he's away and I'm not sure where, but I think he's on vacation. I think he's, so. he's stuck at Heathrow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I will be next week. He <laughs> might, my turn. It might be. Yeah. Where are you off to next week, Jula? Next week we are headed to London for six days. So. Oh, lovely. You just yeah. got back from London. I know, but there were no Christmas markets in August. You don't I'm go to Christmas markets up. in London. No, you go to Germany for the Christmas. I already did Germany. the Germany ones and the Austria ones and the ones and the, in, the ones. one in the one in Prague and the one and the one in Prague, Belgium. <laughs> so now I'm going to England. Well, the English Christmas markets can be nothing but boring compared to Western Europe. Well, that's Quite probably true. true, but I'll find my way to some shopping. Don't you worry. <laughs> um uh, Jula, yeah. if you have if you have an opportunity, you should spend an hour or two in the the uh if it's right in the center of London, you should spend an hour or two in in the English in the English in the in, in the English uh, uh Supreme Court. It's a, first of all, it's a fabulous, fabulous building. People don't think about it. Its architecture is phenomenal, but as well as that, if they're hearing a case, it's really interesting to watch and the robes and the bowing. It's great. It's just very interesting. You know, it's I'll so if you have a mind, but Alice, yeah. is alcohol involved and I'm going to try to stay away from courthouses. Well, if you go to the Old Bailey, go in the morning because the judges consume vast amount of alcohol at lunch. I've been there. I agree with you. It's very funny. It's really entertaining. They sell some wonderful Christmas uh, ornaments there. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. I'm not in the Old Bailey, I'm afraid. Well, she's going for, <laughs> she's going for the Christmas market. I know. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> And I'm going to have dinner at Harrods. So I didn't do that in August. So you're the only person in the world that goes to England for Christmas markets. <laughs> I like to be different. <laughs> you know me, Buck. <laughs> Come on now. 
Yeah, you'll have to let us know how that works. I mean, the five plus years I lived in Europe, I never made it to England for the Christmas markets. Why would you? I'd like to go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, to be good. good. <laughs> this is the famous Buck Bosell. <laughs> it is. In his own self, yes. He himself. Buck, Buck, I used to appear in front of your dad. Is that right, Mike? Oh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. Wow. And, and did you did you appear as yourself or as an animal or how did you appear? <laughs> I was a lawyer. Oh, what else? Christmas gifts, Christmas past, that kind of appearance. Buck, what is the what is the Italian pronunciation of your last name? Bocelli. If I'm in Italy, it's Bocelli, but it's a French name, so it's Vosel. Oh, Vosel. Okay, I V A U in France. Ah, Vosel. Merci, Monsieur. But yes, I take liberties when I'm in it. Oh, Denise says she'd rather go to London, but that is the fact that she doesn't speak German. <laughs> Me either. Yeah, there's that. Yep. And the Germans get feisty if you ask them to speak English. <laughs> mm. I never had any problem with them, but I haven't. Been Me talking. either. No. I no. had a really hard time one time in Spire. <laughs> mm. They were not inspiring me. <laughs> so, Denise, are you following the World Cup? Definitely. Yes, I am. Definitely. I just finished the match. So, congratulations. Thank you. I mean, we could have done better, probably. We're not. We're not at our best, but you know, we won, so we're through. It's it's okay. But if we keep playing like this, we're gonna be out. I think next match. <laughs> Well, it depends. I, I thought it was a tremendous, tremendous, tremendous result, and congratulations! I was just so happy for your team and for your country. Thank you. Yeah, we so tonight, the, the United States two. plays tonight as well, right? We play at two, two o'clock Eastern two, time, two. U.S. Oh yeah, so, yeah. Well, yeah, that's that's eight o'clock tonight, my time. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, Michael just, keeps showing us his shirt or his belly. Yeah, I see sure. it. <laughs> well, I hope they do great. <laughs> yeah, and I I assume Mike, your son-in-law and family in Seattle area are all watching and they're in school. Oh, the kids are in school. Do they watch reruns of it or do they? I don't know, but uh, they they watch the games on the weekend for sure. Yeah, the father, you're, the Ian, Ian, right? Is that yeah. the father? He's a soccer coach for. He runs the soccer program for Bainbridge Island, Washington. Okay. Oh. Well, I'm glad that you're not wearing a uh, uh, a shirt from Iran, on like the the poor guy in the U.S. embassy, U.S. embassy in London, who, on the day that they were playing England, he came in with an English shirt and he was fired. Wow. Well, not really. Well, I've got Michigan blue on. He today. was fired. He actually was fired. Yes. I've got Michigan blue on today, which is kind of sad. <laughs> Why don't you have Michigan state green and white on? Michigan. Thought... I'm a Buckeye, so. Uh, oh, okay. I'll be, I'll be paying a sad dollar, and if Rob, <laughs> Rob from Vero Beach shows up, he'll be paying a bunch of happy dollars. I heard <laughs> nobody gets sick there. We don't ever see poor Rob anymore. He's he's traveling all the, every time I've texted him, he's been on getting on a plane or on a plane. Oh, off one. Yep. In a meeting or something. I think his job is just really kind of stunk lately. But um, hi Linda Seals. Hi Linda, it's good to see you. Everybody. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get the meeting started. That's a message for Linda. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> I'll speak for you, exactly. Linda. Go Vols. <laughs> Cool balls. Oh. Yeah, she's well, a you had the wrong background for that, Linda. You got your gator background. I on. know, I know. <laughs> I had to be professional earlier today. Um, <laughs> well, she loves the gators, right? No, yeah. she doesn't hate love the gators at all. No, oh, you're a Tennessee person. I thought you loved them secondarily to Tennessee. Oh heck, no. No, no, they're nowhere in the top twenty-five. Well, <laughs> loyalty is not is not running thick in your blood to your employer, right? So there you go. I saw a, a, a picture today of a woman sitting in a chair at work, obviously with her back to the camera, and it said, "I work for money. If you want loyalty, hire a dog." <laughs> <laughs> I didn't put that one in the newsletter. I should have saved it for next week. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started. I'm filling in for President Sam today. So, Buck, um, 
I'll <coughs> we'll ding the bell. Oh, crap, I forgot to share the thing. It's cool. I don't, I don't think it's gonna share the sounds. So um ding 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 ding. Ding 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 ding. Can you hear it? No, I can't even hear it. A bunch that. of dinglings. A bunch of dinglings. Oh, there we go. Can you hear that? No? All right, never mind. It's my iPhone. Wait a minute. Hold on. No, it's it's fine. When I when you share the screen, you're supposed to click a thing that says share the sound on the thing, but I forgot. All right. So what we're gonna do now is we say the four-way test together. Buck, prepare yourself. It sounds really awful. The only thing worse is if we sing. So everybody unmute and we'll say the four-way test of the things we think, say, and do. Is it, is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Concern. Concern. Will it build goodwill good and will will better relationships? relationships? Will, will it be, will be beneficial to all concerned? Oh, well done. That was only moderately horrible. Because um, the governor's here. Sorry, what? Because the governor's here. That's right. Yes, we were on our best behavior. Um, I don't see any visitors other than our governor, so let's move on to the next thing, which I believe is announcements. Um, one announcement, uh, we have decided, the board has decided that we will not have a meeting December 27th. I put it in the newsletter, but um, we'll also send out reminders. That is the Tuesday after Christmas, since um, usually people are traveling and stuff, so we're going to skip that meeting. So. If you show up, it'll be a lonely hour. You're sitting here by yourself. Although a few people may show up and you can have a little conversation. Um, all right. So I think that's the only announcement. Julie, can you think of anything? Anyone? Uh, not that I can think of, no. Okay. When's the next board meeting? I don't know. I have to get with Sam. And yeah, we haven't set a date yet. Yeah. So when does Michael move? When Michael sells it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, you got it for sale though already, right? Yeah. Are you going to move? We're moving to Seattle. Really? Uh, he's moving as far away outside of Alaska or Hawaii as he could get from us and stay in the contiguous. We'll stay in the contiguous oh. United States. We're going to. Oh Seattle. wow! We're going to Pulse, Pulse, your Pulse Bowl, Pulse right? Mode. Pulse yeah, Bowl. yeah. West of Seattle. Like, I hope you like Luther Fisk and riding on the boat, because that's about the only way you can get to Pulse Bowl is on the ferry. It's a <laughs> well, actually, actually, we go around. Down you around go around Tacoma, got get Bremerton Gig Harbor because the ferry service has been uh, disrupted a lot lately. Oh, that's too bad. They can't get enough boat drivers. Can you believe that? Hmm. Well, can't get enough truck drivers either. So I'm yeah. not surprised. Yeah. Well, it's a it's a big it's a big move. So good luck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm here. Wow. I know. After 40 yeah. years in Florida, Mike, how many years? 43. Wow. 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 Yep. So one hint I have for you, having moved my whole life in a military family, get rid of the stuff before you move it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Quite true. It'll yeah. be a whole different climate there as well. Wow. It'll be like yeah. Scotland. Yeah. <laughs> well, That's right, nice. You'll get used to it. <laughs> yeah, right. There's no such thing as bad weather, <laughs> just bad clothing. So remember that. Mark. Yeah. <laughs> right. All right, so shall we move on? Any other announcements? Um, we'll try to send them out if we have one. Um, any updates from the floor from any of the chairs? I don't know who's a chair on the call. Kimberly, your friendship or fellowship? Uh, fellowships, um, well, obviously sign up for Melbourne if you haven't already, I'm going. And uh, the wait, Hall, wait. Of, Fri the Hall of Friendship, uh, what? What's Melbourne? Melbourne, Australia. The the oh oh, I'm thinking you know, we do live where there's a Melbourne, a town of Melbourne. Yes. Yeah, so. Oh my God, I saw that wreck yesterday where the car drove into the fireworks place. Oh, I didn't. I don't know. I didn't In see. West Melbourne. Yeah, one of the fireworks places. Yeah. Oh, smoke. Up in up in fireworks. No, Melbourne, Australia, for the for the convention in the Hall of Friendship and and. Um, that's that's where I generally spend most of my time is learning about fellowships and, and all the things that we have. So again, sign up, become part of a fellowship. No matter what you do, there's one out there for you. Kimberly, I yeah. didn't hear you mention it last week, but there is a fellowship against trafficking, human trafficking. Oh wow, I didn't I haven't I haven't looked to see what the new ones are, but mm -hmm. if you so desire there's a on the rotary website, there's if you have an interest and there's no fellowship for it. 
there's a process for coming up with one that mm -hmm. some guy did that for surfing and the next thing you know oh. we've got a surfing fellowship so yeah our district did the pickleball one last year oh cool okay. cool <laughs> all right so, well i think you're the only chair that's on the call right now so um okay. i don't have the list in front of me honestly so all right well let's move on thanks for that kimberly um mm -hmm. Sergeant at Arms, I've asked Alana to be our sergeant again today. So take it. Oh, Buck, just so you know, because we don't, you know, in the old club, we used to be able to wave dollars and have someone go around and pick it up. But now we just have people Venmo the money or write a check once a quarter or whatever. It's all on the honor system. So, cool. so although for you, if you make an offer of money, I'm going to write it down and we'll expect to collect that money from you, Buck. So I will give it to Julia so you may hold her accountable. accountable. All right. Well, we know how to do that. Then. All right. Well, thanks. Take it away, Alana. All right. Do we have any birthdays or anniversaries? Oop. I think I saw a hand there. Uh, yes, Connie. That would be me. So everybody can hear me, right? Yep. Okay, yeah. cool. AT&T has been putting in their fiber optics for the internet for the past couple of weeks. So it's kind of been iffy and haven't been able to be vocal. So now is my time. No, um, last week, Emily's birthday was on the 11th and Neil's birthday was on the 14th. That's wonderful. You've, you've I nicely combined them together. <laughs> Yeah, well, and it was it was just one of those things because again, it was like internet was going in and out. We were having such issues. Um, so I'll just throw in my happy dollars now that the fiber optics are in and we're moving to that. Yay. Uh, so we should have better connection and I can more participate. Perfect. All right, um, Julia. Whoops. Yes, I have um, birthday dollars. My husband and my granddaughter share a birthday, December 3rd, and I won't be here. So I'm going to do it this week. Well, happy early birthdays to both of them. That's mm -hmm. wonderful. All right. Any other birthdays or anniversaries? I'm not seeing anything. We are going to move to sad dollars. Do we have any sad dollars? I'm not seeing any hands everybody's oh Man. i think Man. sorry go ahead go ahead mike yes um my team the ohio state buckeyes uh number two in the country played number three in the country michigan maize and blue they played us at our field before 107,000 people and they kicked our asses <laughs> congrats to them <laughs> <laughs> My my no, heart no, no, no. aches for you. <laughs> Linda's Linda's heart heart come up. <laughs> I, I'm not an Ohio State fan either, Linda. So we're good. We're good. <laughs> hey, hey. Bad, very bad. Plus, the Michigan win Linda. helps Tennessee. So you know, I was really rooting for Michigan. Helps Tennessee what? In the ranking a little. Well, they're um, not uh, going to the playoff. Well, no, but still. Looks better for us. <laughs> um, George. Yeah, hi. Uh, I have a sad dollar uh, that Mike is moving to Seattle. Mike, what am I going to do for a lawyer now? Yeah, you got me out of a Mary, couple of chairs. <laughs> you, you refer somebody to me that you trust? A woman or a lawyer? <laughs> a lawyer, a lawyer, no women. <laughs> that's that's fair. I, I think George, considering, I think that's a, that's a fair um, preference. Well, Buck um, made a the history of that. I think we should, George, you should share a one minute history of that. Yeah, yeah, a, yeah, yeah. yeah it's well, Mike was my lawyer when I married the wrong woman uh, 20 years ago. And uh, she, she just got out of prison for trying to kill me. Uh, she was nutcase. Uh, I didn't know that. We only married for six months. But uh, but yeah, Mike, it's sad. Did you sell your house in Melbourne Beach? No, it's for sale. But ex his uh, ex-wife uh, his ex -wife, uh, hired a man to kill him or to beat him within an inch of his life. 
And the hitman she hired was an undercover Brevard County Sheriff. Are you so serious? The yeah, jury, no, no, we're not making that up. Yeah. The jury convicted her, but it wasn't attempted murder because she used the term within an inch of his life. And uh, she spent seven years in prison and before trying to kill him, she broke into his photography office, tore up the proofs of the high school pictures he'd taken, destroyed cameras. It was terrible. She only got seven years. Now she's out. And when, yeah. when does the movie come out? She's out. The What's that? Story, George. Yeah, she, she's out and she's down in Miami again. She can stay down there. Yeah, yeah. at least she's a long way away. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. She did nine years, by the way. Oh, nine. Two, yeah. Two waiting for, waiting for her trial. Yeah. So I, yeah I'm not even terrible. gonna. I'm not even gonna speak today because how do you top that? <laughs> yeah. Ho hopefully yeah. you can't. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I'm still here. Still here. I had no idea. George. Yeah. I, I, George. I had a friend. Yeah. I had a friend who's. A uh, girlfriend hired a hitman to kill him because he wouldn't propose. <laughs> yeah, God. gotta be an easier way to break up with somebody. I don't. I don't want anybody on here, including you, Julia, to talk to my fiance. This, I don't like where this is going. <laughs> Get a yeah. That's so funny. All right, with that, George, um, definitely the lawyer rather than the women. Um, the <laughs> I think, Mum, you had a, a sad dollar? Who's Mum? Ailish. Thank you. Oh, for crying out loud. Don't be so no titles. sorry. I, no, I, titles. I, I, no titles. Sorry, I just had to take a call there. I'm sorry about that. I, uh, I was going to say that I have a sad dollar for all the mass killings, the ongoing mass killings in the United States. And I just find out that that there are 14 countries which are, are allies to include you, to include you, Canada and Australia who have travel warnings on their, their, on their nation's websites about the United States. And that is just tragic, wow. tragic. Yep, wow. Everybody's, <clears throat> everybody's crazy. All right, with that, do we have any happy dollars? <laughs> On that note, um, uh, uh, hey, yeah, George. It's me. I have a, I have a happy dollar. Uh, I had a great Thanksgiving with my good ex and my three kids uh, <laughs> on Thanksgiving at her house, and that was it. Was great. It was, I get along great with her um, and my three kids. Yeah. Well, my kids, my oldest boy is 44 years old, but uh, it was nice. It was very nice. I had a great time. All right. Roger? Hey, uh, just, I'll do a happy dollar for the, we just had a wonderful couple of weeks in the Mediterranean, uh, this delayed cruise. It's good to be back. And uh, I think in March, we're headed off to Japan for another one. We're bringing our grandson over there again for a COVID delayed anime tour. So that'll be fun. So just a couple of happy dollars. That sounds fantastic. Hopefully you have a wonderful time and it sounds like the cruise was good too. It was. Uh, it. Mike. Oh, Julia's ahead of me. Oh, sorry, Julia. Um, I have a couple happy dollars. Um, one, because we have our district governor here today and it's always good to see a friend in the crowd and that he knows so many of our members, but even a better one is that I've already spoke to Diana Buck. Great. <laughs> With that, Buck, you're next. I have a happy five uh, to be present at your club and to have had a wonderful Thanksgiving. My daughter came down to Florida from North Carolina with my one and a half year old grandson. So got to spend some time with them and uh, she'll be delivering another grandson to me in January. Oh, wow. Wow. congratulations, that's fantastic. All the very best of luck on that. Uh, Mike. The uh, USA is uh, still uh, playing in the World Cup. Uh, they have to win today. Uh, they blew a chance to beat Wales, but uh, winning today would advance them to the next round, which would be really good. 
Fingers crossed. All right, Susie? I have five happy dollars. I've had a fabulous Thanksgiving. I had some of you remember Daniel Silva, who was our Rotary Exchange student from 2015, 2016. He was here with me for almost most of the school year and we became fast friends. He's kind of the adopted kid I never had. And he's now 23, living in San Francisco, graduated in May of 2021 with a 4.0 average from Georgia Tech and has got a great job in San Francisco, but he came for a week after spending a month in Brazil with his family. And um, we've had a great time the whole time he's here. Um, Thanksgiving, we had 14 for dinner. On Friday after Thanksgiving, we had 18 for leftovers. And then, um, so it's been a frantic, hectic weekend, but it's been great fun. So it's been great to have Daniel here. So I know some of you remember him. So it's been awesome. Truly one of the great success stories of that program. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, Daniel is just in general, wonderful. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Ailish? I was at both Susie's Susie's dinners both on Thanksgiving Day and on the next day and it was all wonderful just wonderful so Susie thank you so much for having me and all those other people they were such a lot of fun we counted up that in the meal itself without counting any desserts we had 10 sticks of butter <laughs> <laughs> wow. But you figure it was split between 14 people and then 18 people, it wasn't that much, but it was a lot of food and it was very rich. So it was fun. Thanks for Susie, coming. Susie's food's always well worth the trip. <laughs> um, Jennifer. Uh, I just had an incredible Thanksgiving with my family and my sister made a charcuterie board that was five feet long wow. and filled oh. with all of these amazing, beautiful, <laughs> I mean, she had little meat, deli meats looking like flowers and everything. It was incredible. And the whole, everything was fabulous. So very grateful for that. That sounds amazing. It's always a talent. Um, all right, I think that covers us for Happy Dollars. Susie, I'm going to hand it back to you. All right, well, thank you, Alana. Great job. Um, all right, well, with that, I think our next up is our famous district governor, Buck. Denise, do you want to introduce him? Sorry, uh, I had my hands <laughs> underneath the blanket. <laughs> it's cold in half in the house. Yeah. <laughs> <It's not cold. laughs> all right. Tell uh, me uh, that. Buck, was going to introduce him, though. Do, do you need to use uh, slides or anything? Do you have a slideshow I meant to ask you earlier? No. Okay, you're just going to speak. Okay, then I'll turn off the share. If you say that like that's a bad thing. That's a great no, thing. No, no, no. It's a perfectly <laughs> good thing. It's just that I'll turn off the share so we can see you then. Please do. There we go. There we go. There we go. So I'll give a brief introduction of my friend Buck Bussell. Uh, Buck's home club is the Rotary Club of Vero Beach, Sunrise. Um, lovingly known as the Sunrise Rotary Club. He is a major donor. Uh, you heard him speak that he has a daughter and have another grandson on the way. Um, but Buck has been, uh, his family has been a part of the Treasure Coast since 1924, where his grandfather, James, helped, uh, was one of the founding fathers of Indian River County. Um, to go further in depth, I will bring on to you Buck Bosell. Good morning, Governor. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So, so good to see everybody. Uh, this is the first Zoom Rotary uh, meeting I've had a chance to speak at other than training sessions. So I thank you for that. And I have uh, looked at all of your members from around the world. And I think that's uh, phenomenal. So I'm very excited to be here. Um, Julia has kept me abreast of the things that your club has been doing. So uh, I'm Buck Bosell. Uh, I'm a small town country lawyer. No, George, I am not in the least bit interested in representing you uh, in any way, shape or form. We'll remain friends that way. Uh, we won't have any conflicts. Um, and I think it was Michael who said uh, he appeared in front of my dad. My dad was a, a judge here. And I hope he treated you with respect, Michael. I'm sure that he did. Yep. Um, and I hope you won. Yep. Good. Well, that's a good thing. Okay. So um, I got involved in Rotary as a former Kiwanian 
Uh, we didn't do a whole lot. And I got invited to a Rotary meeting and joined back in 08. And we've been doing a lot of things ever since. And I am very excited about the district. And I started looking at the district, its membership, its makeup. And I looked up the definition of a district governor, and it said to provide leadership, motivation, and guidance to foster achievement in the clubs. And I took that as a challenge. Uh, we have had some great district governors uh, in our district, uh, and then came Julia, and somebody had to rebuild it again. No, uh, that's a joke. That's a joke. Um, the district has uh, gone through some trials and tribulations, and for those of you uh, that are not physically located in the district, as you know, um, we are located on the east coast of Florida. We go from Boca Raton in the south to Titusville in the north. Roughly speaking, that's about 200 miles. My little town of Vero Beach is right in the middle. So visiting the clubs physically uh, is not that much of a challenge for me because I can either go north or south. We've got 46 clubs in the district, approximately 1,500 Rotarians in the district. But the district uh, in the past has been somewhat dysfunctional for a couple of reasons. Um, we have had some district governors who were mavericks unto themselves. And we have had some excellent district governors who have tried to build coalitions uh, and have either built the coalition that year to see it fail the next or failed to gain interest in providing continuity to the district. I have tried to take what I've learned from all the past district governors and integrate the future core of district governors including my successor, Doug Heiser, uh, and his successor, Vanessa Havner, uh, into the fold. And now our new district governor designate, nominee designate, uh, Marsha uh, Gedke, who is the district trainer. And what I've tried to do is to provide uh, continuity and continuation of purpose so that when I make a district appointment or when somebody else makes a district, district appointment, we all collaborate and cooperate to make sure that these appointments and the projections uh, and guidance that we are putting together sticks with the district and doesn't get lost in the shuffle from transition to transition, district governor, district governor elect, et cetera. So I, I think that is going to continue and the district is gonna proceed forward with a purpose. Uh, I'm hopeful the purpose will benefit the district. This year, as you know, we have our first ever woman international Rotary president, Jennifer Jones. Um, I have been privileged uh, to have some one-on-one -on -one time with Jennifer, uh, both in Orlando, Florida, and Baltimore, Maryland, at various conferences. And I am proud to say that not only is she a woman, but she is absolutely the best person for the job. Um, her motivation, her enthusiasm, her, her exuberance uh, is is persuasive throughout. Um, it is infectious, and she is just a remarkable human being. I have tried to promote throughout the district and at the district conference the awareness of women in Rotary as a uh, introduction, so to speak, to diversity, equity, and inclusion. And let me speak to that a minute. Um, the first ever president of a woman of, of a Rotary Club was a woman by the name of Dr. Sylvia Whitlock, who in the little town of Duarte, California, joined Rotary back in 1977. And Rotary International said, you're excommunicated. And she said, well, uh, I'm going to stay as a member of the club, and the club took Rotary International to court. It wound its way through the court system. In 1987, Sylvia was elected 
as president of that excommunicated club. And in 1988, the United States Supreme Court said, Rotary International, you can't do that in the United States. And once that wall fell down, Sylvia became the first ever legitimized woman president of a Rotary Club anywhere in the world. Um, the rest of the story is that Sylvia was not only a woman, she was a very educated woman. She had a PhD in education and she was a woman of color. And I think that's extremely important as uh, we're, we're in the second decade of the new millennium. Um, we talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion. Most people think about race, color, creed, religion, sexual orientation. And Dr. Whitlock did a lot in breaking barriers, not, not only in Rotary, but in other professional organizations. Um, one of the things that I've tried to promote this year is being more inclusive of people that don't look like us, walk like us, or talk like us. Um, handicapped individuals whether it's a physical handicap, a mental handicap, or a combination of both, you know, just because people aren't like us doesn't mean they can't be great Rotarians and doesn't mean that they're not great people. And it, it, it's a shame that a lot of clubs are still um, not opening their doors to individuals who may have a hard time getting through those doors. And so I would encourage all clubs to be more inclusive um, of people who may not get around as well as you and I. And what we're finding is that a lot of the physical locations in which we meet are not handicap accessible. Uh, even in the United States with the American Disabilities Act and other uh, laws. Um, so that's one thing that I would like to see. The other thing that I've been promoting uh, for years and that Rotary International is now promoting is cooperation not only among the clubs, but of different civic organizations, service organizations. Um, as an e-club, you have the benefit of serving as a fabric for people all around the world and integrating ideas that are not unique to a particular geographical area. And I think that is phenomenal. And I would like to see clubs that meet in person do more of what you're doing, and that is integrating to cooperate with, with each other to benefit the communities that they serve or the projects which they undertake. And by that, I mean, if you're in Brevard County, Florida, uh, so to speak, where your club is technically incorporated, and you've got five clubs in a particular district, why not come together to have a social to, to say, hey, folks, within our geographical reason, region, you've got various clubs to pick from. Come meet our members and decide which is best for you. You're doing that in the e-format, and I think that's phenomenal. Um, the other thing is coming together with other service and civic organizations. We've got one club that does a clam bake every year. They partner with the Exchange Club, and they raise about $200,000 for the community on a three-day event. Two service organizations, very well recognized, coming together to benefit their community. Um, I am told that Rotary, the Rotary International president uh, has a monthly conference with the presidents of Exchange, the Lions Club, and the Kiwanis Club. And I think that's great that all of the service organizations, at least the major ones, are coming together on a monthly basis to exchange ideas, cooperation, and collaboration as to how we can benefit each other. The other thing that I have tried to do district-wide is appoint the right people, as I previously stated, with the uh, not only approval, but guidance of those who will uh, succeed me into key positions that not only benefit the district, but keep the district moving forward. Um, Rotary International is just that. It's an international organization, which is evident by the people on this Zoom meeting. And I have appointed an international uh, chair, Bob Calhoun, out of the Fort Pierce, Florida Club, 
This district for the last several years has supported a project in Guatemala known as the Octenement Project. Uh, for those of you that are in the know, um, Octenement was a boys uh, boarding school that was largely started down in Guatemala and kept alive uh, by Steve Dudenhofer and his dad. Steve's originally from West Palm Beach. He's moved down there. Uh, there are now 800 students on a couple of campuses, and it's under the old adage that if you educate a family, you will change a community, and that's exactly what has happened with this, and the district is proud to support it. We've got a trip going down in February, uh, the last week in February and the first week in March. Um, and the other thing that I've appointed Bob to do, and I think you, you may find this interesting since you're such a diverse group, is to coordinate the international projects within the district. In other words, if you have two or three clubs that are doing something in Haiti and two or three in Peru and two or three in the Dominican Republic, why not get those clubs together and have them work either under a global grant or use district designated funds or come together to be more impactful in the community and in the region that they are trying to help, rather than fragmenting those efforts, both in person and financially. So Bob is attempting to uh, help me coordinate those efforts. Um, I've appointed Lyle Freed of the Port St. Lucie Florida Club as my DEI chair. Um, Lyle is visiting clubs and his message is, mm -hmm. Uh, not to force any type of diversity, equity, or inclusion upon anyone, but to make the clubs more aware that there are groups of persons who may they may want to include, which they may not have thought of uh, in the past because uh, the whole DEI thing has just gotten out of hand and gotten so entracted in uh, particular tracks and people are not looking outside the box. And I hope that uh, Lyle will be such an individual that will help us uh, to do that. Polio Plus, um, the Polio Plus Society, uh, a member of my club, Dr. Lael Fairburn has uh, headed that up. Um, you know, Rotary's focus since the 80s has been to eradicate polio. And a lot of the younger members uh, don't know what polio is. They don't know anybody that's ever been affected by polio. And they don't get excited about that. But now polio is uh, not on a resurgence, but, but has made a reappearance in the UK and in the United States. And trying to keep polio relevant with the under 30s crowd has been a challenge for Rotary International. And hopefully we won't let people in our district forget. Uh, and you can designate uh, $100 out of any monies that you give to Rotary to go to the Polio uh, Plus Fund, and you will automatically be enrolled as a member of the Polio Plus Society by contributing that $100 or designating that from the other uh, funds that you may give within Rotary. Um, you know, it, it's it's been a challenge going around the district and listening to the uh, problems faced by the clubs. Rotary International says grow Rotary. And by that, they mean two things. They mean attempt to grow membership and as you know, we've been growing membership uh, from 1.2 million, where we've held the last 20 years, to 1.4 million worldwide, largely due to growth um, in uh, India and the Asian uh, countries, certainly not in the Western Hemisphere, where growth um, uh, has suffered. So Grow Rotary not only means membership, but it means grow the potential for Rotary by informing the rest of the uh, world what we are doing and getting them more interested in, in our projects and in partnering, even if they're not Rotarians with those projects, whether it be through other service organizations or, or other means of participation. So growing Rotary 
has led to a couple of changes. As you know, we've adopted the seventh area of focus, which is the environment. And young people are very interested in the environment. What they are not interested in is being part of a formalized group of old farts that sit around and talk about how great they are and what they're going to do. These, these, these are hands-on kids. They want to be digging in the dirt. They want to be planning. They want to be doing all the stuff outdoors. And the challenge for Rotary International is how do we engage those individuals within our framework of what largely has been weekly in-person meetings? Um, that's a real challenge. I don't have the answers to those challenges. I think an e-group such as this is, is a is a start. Um, it's a great start to a problem that we're going to face in the uh, future. As we all know, uh, the pandemic over the last two years has changed people's outlooks on life in general, on careers in general, as to prioritization of what they feel uh, is important. Um, a lot of people have done 180s. Uh, you got people moving from Florida to Washington State, for God's sake. Um, so we, we've all had our priorities change, and how we keep future generations engaged is probably the biggest challenge that Rotary International is going to face. And I commend you for uh, having your e-club and involving people around the world that may be part of the future of Rotary International. I'm just one guy. I'm trying to promote the the good that the clubs are doing, trying to identify problems in the club where they exist, and trying to find other means and mechanisms by which individuals can come together under the framework of Rotary and do good in the communities and in the world. And all important, when I travel to the 46 clubs in our district, your club online, and I engage Rotarians, the one thing that I am always, always amazed about, and I believe will keep this organization uh, going and healthy well into the future, is the change that individuals see in themselves by virtue of their involvement in Rotary. If we ever lose that, we lose the organization. So I commend you for keeping that spark alive by virtue of Zoom across the world that not only ignites a change in the communities you serve, but obviously has ignited a change within yourselves to enable you to create this great eco group. And I thank you for that. And I thank you for the opportunity to have visited with you today. Thank you. Thank you, Buck. Thank you. Um, we have a few hands raised. Well, uh, and, and please ask questions. Um, Denise. Sure, I see Denise. Uh, no, that was just applauding. Oh, oh okay, okay. It was a great talk. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know about that. I, so, if we have Denise, where is the nephew? <laughs> oh. Yeah, that, that's oh. what I heard a lot. That's fun. <laughs> the lowest form of humor. Well, that was very, very interesting. I'm, I'm, yeah, I guess, I guess because there's 500 and some odd um, districts, right? So I, I'm surprised that you get to meet the president. I think she sounds like a fascinating woman. Well, you know, it was interesting at Pets, um, and and I have to brag on this. Uh, the Florida Pets um, President Elect Training is a a program that. Uh, the likes of which I have not seen before. And when three past presidents of Rotary International that were in attendance uh, make an announcement to the public that this is the best pets in the world, um, that, that's kind of cool. And Jennifer was there and my class of district governors, there's eight of us in the state of Florida. We call ourselves the Explorers. Um, we got an hour and a half with her one-on-one, -on -one, uh, which was pretty darn nice uh and i've had a similar experience with her and she's just a, a genuinely uh not only a good person but a brilliant individual just a brilliant individual um 
Well, before you go on to Jula's question, um, why did they say that it's the best in the world? I think <laughs> I, I can't I can't speak for for why they said that, but the program is over the top in terms of preparation. Um, Julia was on the preparations team. She can tell you about that. But the preparation starts a year in advance. The programs, uh, not only the content, uh, but the quality of the programs is second to none. The speakers are are unbelievable. The um, the audio visual uh, run by a guy by the name of Marshall Butler is Hollywood quality. Um, it, it's just it, it's it's a Disney like production and. It, your engagement is held every hour of every day, and it's not something that you walk away from a class and you say, oh, God, I got to go to another class at two o'clock. Yeah. It's just the opposite. So, Julie, yeah. do you want to add anything to that? Well, I was just going to basically say the same thing. I've been going to PET since 2013, I think, was the first time I went, and I've gone every year since because I've either been in a, a role that required it, or I've been on the committee, and I continue to be on the committee, but we really do have excellent training at that event, and that's really what they're in awe of, mm -hmm. and the president, the incoming international president has been at our pets every year since 2013, when I started mm -hmm. first attending, so I've met them all, and honestly, if you go there as a president-elect, you would meet them and they're just really down to earth people. They'll sit and talk with you and, and they want to sit and talk with you. They want to hear what you're, what you're thinking and what your responses are to things that are happening in Rotary. So it, it's just a really, really well done event. Oh, the, the other thing I, I was going to say that I say to my in-person clubs, but I'm going to say to you guys as well on meeting day, even though you're meeting virtually, I think it's imperative for all of you to either wear your pins or a rotary emblem, shirt, dress, blouse, whatever, whether you are working outside the home or whether you're just going down the street to the local market. Um, you know, uh, our emblem generates conversation. So do me a favor and on meeting day, wear your emblem. We can do that. Yeah. And Julie, you had a, you had more to add or a question? Yeah, it's really not a question. I just don't know, Buck, if you're aware. Um, next year, Denise, who lives in the Netherlands, will be our club president. So this will be the first time that the, anyone in the state of Florida has been a Rotary Club president that did not live in Florida. So it's pretty I, awesome. I, I think I think that uh, calls for a visit from the district governor to make sure the protocol is followed. <laughs> Well, bring it on. <laughs> You're most welcome. Or pay your own way. And I'm sure she'd be more than happy to meet you in some pub somewhere. In well, there. I I haven't been to the Netherlands in four years. So it's time for another visit. Uh, the statute of limitations has run out at this point. We're so going in January. Back. We're going the, other, the, other, the other thing I, I did want to mention, uh, now that I'm looking at my notes, and Julia, this just came up today. Um, you know, the district... Uh, through COVID lost touch with our uh, youth exchange program, our Rotary Youth Exchange Program. And Stephanie Williams, our youth exchange here in the district, is reinstituting the youth exchange program. And she has an orientation meeting this coming Tuesday night, December 6th at seven o'clock Eastern time. Uh, and if any of you uh, around the world are interested in participating in the district youth exchange project, I would encourage you to attend that meeting. I sent out a Zoom link about an hour ago, and hopefully you should get that. So I just wanted to reemphasize that. Hey, Buck, we have uh, get our member Gail is on today. I think she's still with us. Mm -hmm. And uh, you might want to visit her because she's either in Lyon, France, or Switzerland. I forgot. She's in Lyon. Yep. Well, my uh, my family comes from a little town outside of Poitiers, France, and uh, maybe I'll check her out when I do my genealogy. And she is also a prior youth exchange student. Aha. Uh -huh. 
She can speak to the benefits of the program. Absolutely. <laughs> Kim, Kim's got a hand up. Hi, Kim. You're on mute. Yeah, it's, yeah, Kimberly. Um, and not a question, just an observation, and I've made it before, but I'm going to keep making it, and maybe eventually the issue will be resolved. We all travel a lot, but particularly when I've traveled over in Asia, Rotary is seen as an elite organization. And unless you're president or vice president of some company, they don't invite people to be Rotarians. I've met young people who've been on exchanges and all sorts of other things. And, and we start talking about Rotary and they're like, oh, I just work in the shop and, and, and I'm not good enough to be a Rotarian. And, and, and we don't, we'll let, we're, we're Americans, we'll let anybody in. But it still has that, that atmosphere of you have to be somebody, but just your mere existence means you're somebody. So you could be part of Rotary. But they I don't know think it's club. I'm sorry? I know a good e-club you could invite them to. <laughs> yeah, well, I have. The, prob the problem is my friends in Taiwan, it's midnight for them. But I certainly yeah. have talked, I certainly have told them about it. And I plan to go back to teach English again in Taiwan sometime this next school year. I'm not exactly sure when. Um, and I will certainly talk about it again. But I mean, I've been a lot of places and talked to a lot of people and that that elitist attitude is very prevalent in other parts of the country. And I don't know how we overcome that. Well, and, and you know, it's it's interesting because that's one of the things that um, I guess I became more acutely aware of in Houston this summer at the International Convention, because you start talking to fellow Rotarians from other parts of the world, and they're the cream of the crop, so to speak. And they they don't want to let other people in. They want to keep it an elitist organization. And you know, we we hear all the good that we're doing around the world and we see the videos, but yet that's not reality in a lot of part of the world. So I agree with you. There are still clubs that do not admit women. Oh, uh, I've been to one of those. Yeah. So you know what I'm talking about. And it, it's going to be a slow right? change. It's but you know, changing cultures, I mean, look at the Middle East for 2000 years. You 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 don't change a culture overnight. Mm -hmm. No, no. And they have to want to change. But as as the elites go on to higher pastures, as we say, those of us who are in God's waiting room, um, they got to be backfilled by somebody. Yeah. So that, I, I, I preach I could, about that a lot. I, I feel very strongly about that. And, and I, I appreciate that. I, I, pre I just talk about it. Well, and, and I feel strongly about it as well. That's why I want to be as inclusive as possible as humanly possible we've all got war stories and i could fill the room with them but that's not necessary all right thank you very good any more questions or comments for buck yeah denise um when she she's not going to be able to attend pets here in florida sadly because she because of her work commitments so she's going to go to the one in the Netherlands, um, which will be good because then she'll make a lot of contacts over there with the with the Dutch presidents. Well, what Denise? What are what do you do? I'm an um, I make ultrasounds on pregnant women. Oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I um, went to the the pre pets here last uh, Thursday, right? Which was very interesting. Um, and then it turned out there was also a president elect from an all male club where no women were allowed. I was like, what? <laughs> and um, so we were at the same table. And then later on, a, a woman joined us at the table and she turned out to be the president elect of an all female club. So female club. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> interesting. Well, yeah. I, I, I hope that you will make an effort to attend the Florida Pets if you are at all able. Uh, unfortunately, I can't, but I wish I wish I could, especially now I've heard you talk about it. So, so great. So, yeah. And, you know, um, there's plenty of places for you to stay, so. I know. No, I wish I could. It's really it's work commitments. I, I simply do not have any free days left to, to take up to go to go to Florida. Well, buy the company and hire somebody else to do it. <laughs> oh, if I could only do that. <laughs> there, there's that elitist Rotarian attitude yeah. there. So, yeah, not everybody can do that. 
I want to sort of a, a story that said the, um, the the Shriners have the parades, the Kiwanians build the parks, and the Rotarians own the town. And that's <laughs> very much how it used to be, I think. So I think you're Mike, right. Yeah. yeah the, uh, so, Buck, I think you should uh, consider having Denise uh, speak to your club uh, via Zoom. Uh, or other clubs, or to the district, because in a prior life, she was a midwife, and she has delivered over 100 babies, and she spoke to our club uh, as a, uh, as our guest, uh, as our program uh, last year, and it was just terrific, yes. and what happened was, she didn't have a life, because she was always on call, and so she became a, you're a sauna what? Well, yeah, sonographer. I don't know what you call it in the United States, but yeah. 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 <laughs> wow. Well, yeah, I, I, I myself am a former EMT and I have delivered two babies, oh, wow. not a hundred. Uh, and yeah, it's, uh, I'm glad I'm not a woman. <laughs> no, it's, it's hard work. Having the baby or delivering the baby? And the having the baby part. Yeah. All I had to do is, is guide them. You know, it's I wasn't doing the hard part. And then I think the next 18 years are the near impossible part. But oh, that's yes, hard. definitely. Yeah. Wow. wow. <laughs> well, I commend right. you for what you do. That's, uh, that's... <laughs> thank you. No, well, we but, yeah, to... but sure, if, if you want, I can I can easily come on a Zoom meeting or anything or, you know, speak to you via Zoom and give a Great. presentation. No, thank it. you. Absolutely free. <laughs> thank you, Denise. I appreciate that. And we were, and we were I, talking that, about where everybody's gosh. from. Finola is currently in Dublin, right? Finola, you're not. Are you coming back? Yeah, from that's right. I'm in Dublin. Yeah, I'm. I'm not at home. I don't have pink walls. I'm in a music school. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's I'm nice. In, yeah. I'll be headed over to Killaloo in a couple of months. To Killaloo. Yeah. Well, what are you doing there? Um, I have a friend who uh, is there and uh, a free place to stay in a lovely little town. Oh, yes, it's very cute. Yeah, lovely. Nice, very bad weather at the moment, but it's nice. We don't let weather get in the way. You're right. You don't come to Ireland for the weather or the food. <laughs> no such thing as bad weather, just bad clothing. Kimberly. Yeah. Oh, so, so, Buck, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if you have a fellowship chair this year or not. I was fortunate enough to be asked by Jula to be her fellowship chair, and then I stayed on when Els was the uh, governor, but I'm happy to talk about fellowship at any meeting that would uh, like to have a speaker about it. And, I can't uh, see, I can't see who's talking. Kimberly. Kimberly. Okay, thank you. Kimberly, sorry, I don't, I don't put my picture up there, so I have a thing about it. If, if for no other reason, then I know it drives Michael crazy, so I don't put it up there. <laughs> Where's Michael? Has he dropped off? Thank he you, dropped off. Yeah, so I'm always happy to talk about fellowship if you find yourself. Yeah, great. No, I went you. I actually went to New Zealand once and their, their speaker didn't show up and the president came over and my very first meeting, my very first week in New Zealand in Nelson. And he said, we don't have a speaker. Can you be our speaker? And I'm like, OK. <laughs> yeah. So I was the speaker. <laughs> so. I can I can do it at the drop of a hat about fellowships. Well, I know, but you'd, you'd, you'd have to show yourself. Well, I'd have to, I could show slides. I have slides. Cool. I have fellowship slides. That's all you need to see. Oh, uh, there we have it. N nobody needs to see this. Okay. She's not. <laughs> you're not that hideous for crying out loud. I just don't like myself on camera. It's heinous. Well, you won't be looking at you. We will. Well, there, <laughs> therein lies the issue. <laughs> <laughs> Therein lies the problem. It's lunchtime. I don't want. I don't want to break oh, people off their food. You have the perfect <laughs> face for radio, and I have the perfect voice for silent films. Right? So <laughs> exactly so right. Yeah. Exactly right. No, I'm happy to talk about fellowship at any time. So thanks, just, Kim. If, I I, if I'm if I'm not teaching, uh, because I do a lot of I do a lot of teaching adults, um, I'm I'm available. Thank you. I'll put my my email and number in the chat. You can have it. Thank you, Kim. For you. Yeah, and I do go by Kimberly. Thank you, Kim Burley. Thank you. <laughs> Burley, Kim. 
All right, everyone. Well, I think we've about hit our time limit. I'm sure Buck Wait. has has other DG duties to perform. Thanks so much for coming today. Oh, I enjoyed it very much. And uh, come back anytime. You know, we're always here at 12 o'clock on Tuesdays. And yep. it's cheap. You don't even have to buy lunch. No. I think the money I saved from not attending the Indian Atlantic Club, although I love the food there. Um, yeah. So I'm going to go eat some leftover turkey and wild rice soup. So there wasn't much leftover, but there's a little bit. <laughs> All right, guys. See you next week. Hopefully I'm teaching so I can get away. All right. Bye. 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 Thank, you, Thank you all. Bye. Bye. Kimberly Thank you. Oh, um, Denise, in the, in the happy, uh, chat happy. I got it. Got it. I got it, Kimberly. Denise, all right, everybody. Kimberly. Let's close with our motto: service above self. Service above self. self. All right. Have a good Denise, week. Denise, happy Take Saint care. Uh, Chris, um, Crystal Christopher's or no Saint Sinterklaas. Yeah, Sinterklaas. That's you. what I was trying <laughs> to say. Center class. Happy center class. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Take care, everybody. The word right, in there. Bye, 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 all. All right, ladies. Thanks, I'm going to end bye. the meeting. I'm cutting bye. you off. Bye. Bye. <laughs>